This is Mrs. Appiah with Lesson 14, Selecting a Sample. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students understand that how a sample is selected is important if the goal is to generalize from the sample to a larger population. Students understand that random selection from a population tends to produce samples that are representative of the population. Pause the video and copy the essential question. Explain several different ways the samples will vary when different random samples are drawn from the same population. As you learned in Lesson 13, sampling is a central concept in statistics. Examining every element in a population is usually impossible, so research and articles in the media typically refer to a sample from a population. In this lesson, you will begin to think about how to choose a sample. Exercises 1 and 2. What is random? Write down a sequence of heads, tails that you think would typically occur if you tossed a coin 20 times. Copy these down on your paper. Tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads. Tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, Tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails. And one more response from a student. Tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, Tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails. Compare your sequence to the ones written by some of your classmates. How are they alike and how are they different? So let's say that these three examples are from three different classmates. Note, notice that the heads and the tails mostly alternate. There are a couple of places where tails occur twice in a row or the heads occur twice in a row, but mostly they alternate. Question two, working with a partner, toss a coin 20 times and write down the sequence of heads and tails you get. So this next data is from three students in class who did this activity. Here are their results. Tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, 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 heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, heads, tails. Pause the video and for the next row, you do the activity for 20 times and copy down what you get. If you don't have a coin, you could copy these numbers or these letters. Heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails. And one final sample from class. Tails, heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, Heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, tail, tail, heads. Compare your results with your classmates. So taking a look at this, notice that we have heads, 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 several heads in a row, and then several tails in a row. What I want to do now is I want to highlight any time I have three or more heads or tails in a row. So let's see, here we have a set of four, a set of four, a set of three. Here's another set. 
Here's another set. Here's a set. And here is a set. So what I did is I just highlighted any time that heads appeared three or more times in a row and tails appeared more than three times in a row, or three or more. Notice streaks of three or more heads and tails typically appear twice in the 20 tosses. Twice in this toss, twice in this toss, and three in this toss. In a group of 30 students, most of the time it happened twice in the 20 tosses. How are your results from actually tossing the coin different from the sequences you and your classes wrote down? So in this first example one, we just made this up, what we thought might happen if we tossed it 20 times. This example is from actually tossing it. So how are the results different? When we picked the sequence we thought would occur, there were few streaks of three in a row. Tony claimed she could make up a set of numbers that would be random. What would you say to her? She could try, but probably she would not have some of the characteristics that a real set of random numbers would have, such as three consecutive numbers or three consecutive numbers of four even numbers in a row. I'm going to uh, erase this and I'm going to retape question number C. She could try, but she probably would not have some of the characteristics that a real set of random numbers would have, such as three consecutive numbers or four even numbers in a row. And that's from making up a set of data. Exercises 3 through 11. This is about the length of the words in the poem, Casey at Bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two, with but one inning more to play. And then Cooney died at first, and Barrows did the same. A sticky silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could but get a whack at that. We'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. So this handout is about the poem, Casey at Bat. And our questions have to do with this poem. Suppose you wanted to learn about the lengths of the words in the poem, Casey at Bat. You plan to select a sample of eight words from the poem and use these words to answer the following statistical question. On average, how long is the word in the poem, and what is the population of interest here? The population of interest is all of the words in the poem. This is a dot plot of the numbers of letters of the words from Casey at the Bat. There are three words that had one letter. These are all of the words that had two letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There were 16 words that had two letters. And so this is just a graph of all of the, let the, all of the words and how many letters they had each. And each symbol represents up to five observations. It also asks, on average, how long is a word in the poem? And we will figure that out a little bit later. Number four, look at the poem Casey at Bat by Ernest Thayer and select eight words you think are representative of the words in the poem. Record the number of letters in each word you selected. 
find the mean and the number of letters of the words you chose. So again, here is our poem, and you select eight words. So I've gone ahead to do that, and these are the words that I selected. There, while, thousand, ball, bat, strike, muscles, grow. To find the mean, you count the letters and you divide by the number of words. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you count up all of the letters and then divide by the number of words. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pause the video, count the letters, then divide by the number of words and that will find your mean. There are 42 letters divided by 8 words, and that gives us a mean of 5.25. That means that 5.25 is the mean number of letters from my sample. Question 5. A random sample is a sample in which every possible sample of the same size has an equal chance of being chosen. Do you think the set of words you wrote down was random? Why or why not? I thought it was random because I used some little words and some long ones, but I purposely chose some of each, so it wasn't random. Question six, working with a partner, follow your teacher's instruction for randomly choosing eight words. Begin with the title of the poem and count a hyphenated word as one word. Record the eight words you randomly selected and find the mean number of the letters in those words. So we did this activity in class and here are our results. The eight words randomly selected were nine, four, seemed, in, fraud, is, air, close. The mean is the number of letters divided by the number of words. Pause the video and figure the mean. There are 31 letters and 8 words. The mean is 3.875, and that is the mean letters per word. Compare the mean from your random sample to the mean you found in exercise 4. Explain how you found the mean for each sample. Example four, the mean was 5.25 letters per word on selected words. So we selected those words ourselves. In exercise six, the mean was 3.875 letters per word, and that was a randomly selected sample. As a class, compare the means from exercise four and the means from exercise six. I'll provide a chart for you to compare the means. Record your mean from exercise four and your mean from exercise six on this chart. So we took the data from three students and the mean from the samples in exercise four were 6.3, 4.9, and 6.3. Then the mean from the sample in exercise six, and this was the randomly chosen words. And the means were 4.5, 4.4, and 4.1. Do you think the means from exercise 4 uh, or the means from exercise 6 are more representative of the mean of all of the words in the poem? Explain your choice. The means from the random sample are more representative of the words in the poem because they are similar, while the means from the sample not chosen randomly vary. So again, our results were, this is the sample that we made up and notice how different the numbers are. Here, this was the random sample and these are all about four words per letter. Question five, the actual mean of the words from the poem, Casey at bat, is 4.2 letters. Based on the fact that the population mean is 4.2 letters, are the means from exercise four or the means from exercise six a better representation of the means of the population? 
The means from the random samples are better because they are similar and are closer to the mean of 4.2. Also, the means from exercise 4, which is the sample not randomly chosen, are generally larger than the mean of the population. So the random sample was better than the selected sample. Question 10. How did the population mean of 4.2 letters compare to the mean of your random sample from exercise 6 and to the mean you found in exercise 4? The mean number of letters in all of the words is 4.2, which is about 4 letters per word. The mean of my random sample was 3.875, which is about 4 letters per word. And the mean from my sample in exercise 4 was 5.25 about five letters per word. Question 11. Summarize how you would estimate the mean of a number of letters in a words of another poem based on what you learned in the above exercises. So this is asking you, how do you select a random sample? You could number each word in the poem, make slips of paper from one to the number of words in the poem. Place the slips of paper in a bag. Select a sample of eight or more slips of paper. Record the number of letters in the words identified by the slips of paper. The mean of the sample would be used to estimate the mean of all the words in the poem. Let's summarize what we've learned in this lesson. This first part you don't need to copy down. When choosing a sample, you want the sample to be representative of the population. When you try to select a sample just by yourself, you do not usually do very well, like the words you chose from the poem to find the mean number of letters. One way to help ensure the sample is representative of the population is to take a random sample, a sample in which every element of the population has an equal chance of being selected. You can take a random sample from a population by numbering the elements in the population, putting the numbers in the bag, and shaking the bag to mix the numbers. Then draw numbers out of the bag and use the elements that correspond to the numbers you draw in your sample. As you get, as you did to get a sample in the words in this poem. The sample of words was a random sample because each group had 129 chances of being selected and each word in the group had 120 chance of being selected. So every word had the same chance of being selected. The population was all of the words in the poem. The sample is the set of eight words we randomly chose. The sample statistic is the mean number of letters in the eight words. And these are the vocabulary words that we are focusing on in this unit right now. Random sample, population, sample, sample statistic. And that concludes lesson 14.